All right, welcome <laughs> to the live stream, everyone. So this is Ask a Loan Officer. Uh, my name is Kyle Seagraves, and you know what I never do is put the names up here. Those are helpful. Uh, hey. So this is Dan Friel. Dan has a YouTube channel as well. The link is in the title of this uh, video. But what we're going to do is spend the next hour, we're going to cover uh, what's going on with uh, mortgage rates, what's happening in the kind of housing world, and then we're going to answer your questions as well. So uh, Dan and I are both licensed loan officers in all 50 states. Um, we have a team who'd be happy to help you. Uh, if you go to winthehouseyoulove.com, we do free home loan consults. Um, if you want to get a pre-approval or just take a look at your numbers or ask some questions, we can help you that way. Um, Dan, what's going on? Hey, I actually had a consultation today and I actually went to the people's house and I'm sitting, I'm sitting down with this, the, the, she's, she was a really old lady and we're going through it and we're talking to it. I love peanuts. So we're sitting there and she keeps asking me questions. It was about a reverse mortgage. So I'm, I'm sitting there and every time she asks a question, I just sit there and I was, you know how you just kind of hyper eat. I'm just eating okay. and eating and eating. Yeah. And then all of a sudden she, I was like, oh, we're done. And then I look down, I'm like, all the peanuts are gone. And I was like, oh my God, I am so sorry. You know, I ate all your peanuts. I didn't realize I ate all your peanuts. I just was like nervously eating, I guess, or whatever. She's like, ah, don't worry about it. Those are the ones, my, my teeth, I had to get my uh, teeth uh, pulled and I have fake teeth. So now those used to be chocolate covered peanuts and I, now I can't bite them. So I just suck all the chocolate off and put them back. <laughs> that was, that I think was I <laughs> I think I've heard this one before. Was that a, did you get that on the, uh, the underside of a Laffy Taffy wrapper? Yeah, I don't know. Pastor Tony, I've heard that today when I was listening to him. So that's my, oh, uh, let's see. Education. Yes. Yes. The double punch. Um, all right. So we got Reginald Jenkins again. Awesome. Zach, Sarah, uh, Missy boy. Good to see you all let's see i think i said sarah walton already um adrian scott um you want to hop in some questions and we can get us to some rate stuff afterwards sure sweet um so just so you guys know tonight we're, what we're going to do is we, kyle and i've been each, each getting like i won't say hate mail but a lot of people are like dudes we're you know we're going on we're one of the first ones to ask questions and then you don't add, you know don't check with us and don't you know answer those so we're going to try to do this we're going to try to go for an hour tonight uh, because my attention span and probably your attention span is bad. And we're just going to go through, we'll just give you a little bit of information on tech, uh, what's going on in the market and so forth. And then we're just going to rapid fire through these questions. But what I got to tell you guys is if you have a more in-depth question. So the tough thing is we, it's hard for us to go into details on a single question. Because it could be, I mean, we could sit here for 15 and 20 minutes answering your question. The bad thing is all the people sitting on the sidelines, we're not getting to theirs. So if you have a really in-depth question, all we're going to ask you to do, set up a consultation. This is it. It's a free consultation. There's no strings attached. We're not going to hard pressure sell you. We're just going to answer your questions. And then hopefully, if we can help you through this process, then you might use our services. So that's the whole point. But we just want to get through as many questions tonight as we can so we kind of get the hate speech down a little bit. No hate speech. Um, all right. So Reginald said, uh, why would one lender approve you for more than another lender? What makes the biggest difference? And then there was also a follow-up of, of, I applied with a mortgage broker. They approved me for 180,000. I went to a new construction developer and their preferred lender approved me for 242, um, closing on this 27. Okay. So why would one lender approve you for a different amount than the other? Um, so the secret is there is no, uh, like when a lender pulls your application, there doesn't come back one magic number of what you're approved for. Um, it kind of is a little bit of a guessing game in a sense. So for instance, uh, we, a loan officer might run your application, uh, pull everything in and then run it through the automated underwriting software. Let's say for around, what was your first number? 180,000 and they might get an approval. And if you're happy with that, then they might say, great. Um, if you want more then they might run your approval at a higher number to see if it comes back. Uh, basically what happens is like the underwriting software doesn't say, Hey, Reginald's maximum number is X. Uh, it basically says you enter X and we'll tell you if it's a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Um, so that's usually what happens. It's likely that one lender just try to push it all the way uh, higher. And one lender went lower ju just cause that's maybe the max that you told them. You can always just go back to that lender and say, Hey, could you approve me for more? Um, and they can check that for you. Um, that's primarily going to be the difference that you'll see with different lenders. Uh, Zach said, how do I know, um, if what a lender says I can afford is really the price I should buy? 
Um, don't they want me to buy as much as I can uh, so they make money? You want to take that? Sure. Like it might probably there's probably a lot of loan officers that are just like that. One of the first questions I ask when my during my consultations and we really try to train our loan officers the same way, we want your input. We we do these all day long. The consultations, you know, that's what we do all day long. And we usually what I ask is, what are you comfortable paying? I don't want, I, you know, I really don't want to put you into the maximum because I wouldn't do that to myself. So I always ask, what, what do you, what you, what are you comfortable with? And then we start backing in the numbers, and then many times you'll see that number really doesn't work for me. So then I come back to you and say, so wh where do you want to be? Because my whole goal, our goal is, is to match that payment for you. And if we can do that, kudos. If we can't, then hopefully, you know, you might come into more realistic numbers. To, to realize, because I've had people call me, I don't want a house payment over a thousand bucks. And they're in Chicago. Well, our taxes are the second highest in the whole country. So 500 of that's gonna be toward their taxes. So that means their mortgage piece of the puzzle is gonna be a $500 payment. You, you're, you'll not buy anything. You, you won't qualify for anything. So in a nutshell, that's that would be the answer. I, I, I would highly, don't use, don't use that mortgage broker because that's their only intentions to get you up to the highest loan amount possible. They're not working, f you know, with you or for you. They're working, you know, in their best interest. Sarah Walton said, how is income determined for an hour, hourly employee with very consistent weekly hours and pay? Uh, was there a follow-up? Nope. You want to tackle that one as well? Yeah. So what we take is we just take your average. So if you're averaging, some people average 35, some 36, some 38, some 40. Very rarely is there 40 anymore. And that used to be the average work week. So we, you just take your average work week times um, your wage. Okay. You take that times that. And then you multiply that by, you could do it by 52 weeks or you could do, do multiply by what. So I would do it by 52 weeks. So that is your you know, you break it down per week and then you multiply it times 52. That's your yearly and then divide it by 12. So if I got lost you there, take your hourly wage times the your average hours. OK, that gives you that piece of it times 40. That gives you a day times five or, you know, and, and then times 52 divided by 12. That's a long equation. I'm sure you have a calculator that could do exactly this. Um, and I, unfortunately, I don't yet. Watch that. At least not that's available. But it, it, <laughs> yeah, hopefully that makes sense. So you, it, you should just break down what your what your pay is per week. You know how many hours that is. Multiply that by fifty two because there's fifty two weeks in the in the year, and then divide it by twelve, and that would give you your monthly income. And that's what we're really looking for. Um, Missy Boy said, "Hey, thanks again for the informative session. What do I need to know if I plan to buy a rental property, uh, a single family home?" in the Delaware, Philadelphia area. As far as the area specifically, it's gonna be best to talk with a local real estate agent um, to figure out what is the market looking like for single family investment homes. Um, likely it's going to be pretty competitive because it's competitive just for uh, normal home buyers or primary residence home buyers. As far as purchasing uh, with, with a mortgage, you're gonna be looking at a, a conventional investment loan that has a minimum of 15% down. Uh, most people go for 20% when they're at that point, so they remove the mortgage insurance, but 15% is the actual minimum um, there. Other than that, um, you just, you'll just you be able to use the, uh, the future rental income, 75% of it, to help you qualify for that loan. Other than that, it's a pretty normal loan. Uh, pretty uh, standard to the rest of a primary or compared to a primary residence mortgage. Yeah. Um, Missy Mio said, after a chapter seven bankruptcy, can I apply for an FHA loan exactly two years after the discharge date? Um, it sounds like you read the guidelines. <laughs> you can actually apply prior to, you cannot close until the three, three, uh, the, the two years and a day. Um, let's see. Zach said, should I buy a home in a higher priced market if I only plan to live in a place for five years? What do you think on that? You know, I would, I would go where I can afford. Um, you know, why the high price? Well, if you get a high price, it has a higher propensity to go down. You know, a 10% adjustment in, in a market for a million dollars is much more than, 
you know, seven hundred thousand dollars. I'm not saying the market. You know, I think the market's going to crash ten percent, but there's likelihood in some areas it's going to, and especially the high cost areas or the high you know, those those areas that saw, you know, like Austin and those areas that basically saw you know a fifty percent increase in two and three years. I mean, that's unheard of. I got a video coming out shortly that just it goes through you know real estate. The average real estate return sh should it earn about four point four percent a year in appreciation. So those areas that saw you know 15, 20, 30 percent appreciation in a year and then two, they're they're going to get hurt a little bit. But it, it, you know buy where you're comfortable with. What what spot you know what price or payment can you afford? What are you most comfortable with? That's the best way I would go without breaking the bank to buy the place. Yeah, the other consideration too would be uh, in five years you can also rent it out if you want to. You don't have to sell. Um, and in a higher price market, it's likely that you're going to have higher rents that are comparable to that as well. So that would be something to look at um, if you're looking for what are your what's your exit plan and how's that factor into your purchase. Yeah. Uh, Miss Boy, <laughs> I think that's how you say this. Um, when buying a house, what do you consider a red flag? For example, a roof that's leaking or what else? Um, I don't have necessarily specifics, but my the main thing I think that you need to have is a home inspection, a thorough home inspection from an inspector that you trust. Um, have them walk through the inspection with you and help so that you can understand what's happening and how big of a deal is this rather than just like a short list of like, here's what you should watch out for. Um, have somebody who's qualified to walk you through the entire condition of the home so you feel confident about it. And then when you run into issues, if there is a roof that's leaking, go ahead and start reaching out to people to see what would estimates be for uh, to get those issues fixed. That's going to put you in a much better spot to get an actual plan going um, than just like a couple little, you know, here are a couple of red flags and then the, the house is off limits. When in reality, a problem that you may run into might not be as expensive as you think it is. Um, and you may be even able to have the seller fix it or give you a credit uh, for the cost of that repair as well. Uh, Moppy Tommy said, measure his nose. I think, uh, mentioned to your, your, uh, joke, your <laughs> peanut joke. Um, Ms. Mio said, I want to take a 401k loan for the down payment and closing costs. Uh, my plan requires documentation agreement of sale or mortgage agreement. How does this work? Where do I get one of these documents? Dan, that's all you. Yeah, we can help you with that. Actually your pre-approval. Uh, should serve that purpose and or your purchase contract. So we could provide you and your lender should be able to provide you with, uh, once you get the house you know, purchase agreement, meaning you, you found the house, you put it under contract, now you applied for the loan, you know, we, with that documentation, you should be fine. But what you're going to need in, in many cases, they're going to want to know what the bottom line is. So a lot of times what you're going to need is kind of like the loan estimate or one more additional piece of paper that you know, put you further down the road because they're going to want to see, you know, that you're not taking out $100,000 and you only need 20. So your loan estimate is the piece of basically a paper that you're going to get right initially when you apply for your loan. And it's going to tell you your loan amount, your interest rate, your cost and everything. And it'll also give you the bottom line, how much you're going to need to bring to closing. So with that, and a, a, with a copy of your purchase agreement, you should be good to go. Uh, Sarah said, I love the pool background, Dan. Um, and Sarah, yep. what you actually need to know, this is Last Dan's. Week. Yeah. So I came to my Florida house. Yeah, this is Dan's $65 million Florida house. Uh, it's sweet. It's you know, you come down and visit me sometimes. You ever got you guys are down in Florida. I won't tell you where I live though. But <laughs> it's the only 127 million dollar home in Florida. Actually, that's probably not true. Uh, yeah. So Dan's 300 million dollar house is it's really nice. I've been there once. Uh, the water is that that uh, it's really got some nice motion there in the background. It's consistent too. I have I have pumps that make sure the the, the uh, waves go precisely the same. For the next uh, one. Yeah, that sounds yeah. about right. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, I saw one of these. Uh, someone's going to like take it on its face value and be like, this guy has a yeah. $90 million penthouse. Let's <laughs> get mortgages. Uh, Sarah also said, how does rental income on a multi unit factor into the amount you can get approved for? 75% gets counted as income part of DTI or directly to reduce the mortgage amount you're responsible for. If it's going to be a new home that you're purchasing, uh, then it's going to be 75% of the rental income that will offset your mortgage amount. 
um, it's only counted as uh, income if it's on your Schedule E. Um, so it's a house that you already own. Um, so it's just going to reduce your mortgage amount on your debt to income ratio. Um, also, how, yes, how can I get a consultation with you? Is this not big enough? I feel like sometimes we've got Does, a couple questions where people have asked like, how do we get a consult? I'm like it is, it's, it's right here. I'll make it a little bit bigger. Yeah. There we go. Um, really, what we do here is we, we try to briefly answer your questions, but really, if you need a thorough answer to some of these, because some of the, some of them really get in depth, you know, if you're self-employed or things like that, you know, schedule a meeting and we'd love to talk to you. Uh, Adrian said, if I were to take out a 401k loan to help with the down payment, at what point would I do that in the home buying process? Let me take it. Go for it. Well, you're going to have to apply for it. Like the lab, the previous question we had, you're going to need documentation. It, this isn't the same person, is it? Um, and, no, I don't think. Okay. So, um, I would, I would talk with your mortgage advisor, but here's what I would suggest you do right when you get pre-approved or right when you find the house that you, you you're getting on their contract, that's when we're pretty much going to know how much money you're going to need at the closing because your 401k provider, whoever that's with, they're going to need documentation. The previous person asked uh, to see how much is needed. So you're going to have to find the house and do that. But once we know the, the loan estimate goes out and you pretty much know that number, reach out to them because it might it might be a matter of, you know, 48 hours that they can give you your money or they might say, well, it might take us a week or, or something like that for the, your monies to settle by selling stocks and things like that. So ask your 401k provider how long of a duration of time they need to be able to wire the funds to you. And then we can kind of backload the numbers from there. Uh, also Adrian has another question. I remember watching a video where Kyle mentioned, um, auditing large amounts of money being added to your bank account. Um, yeah, so this is what's called a large deposit in the mortgage world. So an underwriter, uh, when they look at your bank statements, which you're going to provide bank statements or, uh, other account statements to show that you have the money to close, to pay for the down payment and closing costs. Um, when an underwriter looks through that, they're going to look for large deposits. Um, really what they're looking for is they want to see that you didn't take out a loan for the down payment. Um, and that also they do have to check for money laundering or any like terrorist activity. Uh, you can thank the Patriot Act for that one. Um, there are rules for each loan type. Um, and I used to talk about them, but I found it's not very helpful because every underwriter just uses their own discretion. It seems, uh, mm -hmm. different loan programs, you know, it might be 1%. Some of them are based on a percentage of the sale price. Uh, and that's the base guideline, but it's, it's like, it's not even point or it's not even helpful to talk about it because it seems like an underwriter will really anything that's uh, an abnormal deposit, um, that's not payroll. They usually will ask, Hey, where did this come from? Um, and if that's the case, they'll also want to see the source of that as well. Uh, so let's say you just sold your dirt bike, uh, and you have a receipt of the sale. That's perfectly fine. Um, if you went and you deposited cash that was stored under your mattress, that's not going to be fine and you won't be able to use that money. Um, so there's a huge list of what's acceptable and not acceptable. Feel free to reach out to us if you're curious, like, Hey, does this work or not? Um, but, uh, basically anything non payroll that just seems out of the ordinary likely is just going to be asked, Hey, can you back up where this money came from? Uh, Javier Vidania's in here, uh, he asks you a question specifically, Dan. Uh -oh. Are you a are you a smart fella or a fart smell? Is it feller, feller or fella? I don't know. Dude, his joke's worse than my peanut joke. It's it's bad. You guys got some fart. real dad energy. It's fart it's, feller. <laughs> oh, the dad energy. It's a lot. Uh, I'll get there one day. I think maybe. Uh, yeah. So what's your wait? What's your answer on that, Dan? fart smeller there you go you got your answer here Javier <laughs> uh, Todd said we're relocating in July and we're planning on buying um, but instead it just signed a six-month lease I hate paying someone rent for their mortgage but in this uncertain housing market I felt it was our best choice thoughts um, Todd I think that's perfectly fine uh, like there it's really frustrating I think when people kind of force you into you should or you shouldn't do things um, when buying a house really is such a personal thing and it's so unique to your situation, your finances, your family, where you want to go in life and also the location that you're buying in. Um, and if so for you, 
uh, and your family, if the best decision that feels more comfortable right now is, hey, we want to rent to see what's going on, that's perfectly fine if that's going to put you in a really comfortable spot. Um, yeah. Like you're not going to lose tons of money. You're not like there's not going to be these big drastic decisions just because you're going to rent for six months. Um, and if you need more time to kind of weigh your options and see what's going on and explore uh, what you want to do, please take the time to rent and continue doing that. Um, but like you're mentioning too, like you also don't enjoy paying somebody else's rent. Um, and as we've seen in a couple of these live streams, uh, people have been talking about the rents that keep increasing year after year after year. Um, and so I think a six month lease was, was, uh, smart to kind of lock that in for the short term. So you can figure out what you want to do next without going with the full, uh, 12 months. Uh, Dan, what are your thoughts here? Exactly. If you're not ready to, to, to buy, don't buy. You know, it's like somebody going on YouTube to see, you know, is this a good time to, for you to start a family? You know, I hate to say it this way, but it's it's your decision. You know, we, you can find out, you know, what age is a good age or whatever. But going back in housing, I'm, I'm 57 years old. This is my third house that I'm in. I, I don't know what I paid for my first house. I don't know what I sold it for. I don't if my, know if I made money. I just loved it. I put a deck on the back. My dad sided the house for me. He's no longer with us. So every time I drive by that house, I'm like, my dad did that. You know, it's things like that. So there is, you know, monetary, a lot of monetary pieces with the, with the home, especially in this environment. People are like, you know, is it going to go up or down or sideways or whatever? You know, we don't know. Uh, but if you're comfortable with this time, you know, buying, you know, we can help you through that process. If you think renting is a good, good idea, go with your gut. That's all I can say. Yeah. Um, I like it. Um, uh, Adrian. Oh, also real quick. I do see Alicia Herman, um, Bupendra, uh, camp bio cutie 28. Um, I see your questions. We'll get to those here in just a sec. Uh, Adrian said related to non answered questions. Your advice has been great. Regardless, keep up the good work. Great learns when tuning in. Uh, thanks Adrian. Um, Thank you. Tremaine said, would it be okay to email you my loan estimate? Yes. And Tremaine, I think I just got your, oh, yep. I see it. I got your email. Um, what, so what we'll do is if you have, if you have a loan estimate or a quote from another lender, um, what we can do is you can send that to us. There's a link in the description um, for you to upload that uh, securely. Um, you can also email it to me if you would like. And then what I'll do is I'll have a mortgage advisor on our team Go ahead and take a look, compare it against the 80 lenders that we work with and see if there's uh, we can offer you better rates or better terms. Um, and if so, great, then you can get a better deal with that. Um, and if a lender is offering you something better than we can, then we'll tell you that as well. Um, so we just want to make that option available and that's in the description if you would like. Uh, Robin, consistent Robin. I love it. And there's actually quite a few people here uh, who I feel like have been uh, regulars. We got, uh, Miss boy is regular. Um, Maria, uh, and I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. We're Shaba Shaba and freedom girl. They started the uh, drinking games like a month ago. And freedom girl <laughs> for your mindset. Uh, I know there's people I'm missing. Um, Adrian Scott's been in here. Uh, lots of regulars. We really appreciate you guys, uh, kind of tuning in here. Um, Twila said, I appreciate everything you do and teach. Thank you. Um, Rosamond, would you advise I take out a loan to buy a foreclosed house for real estate? And how does the process work? Thank you. Would you like to take that? Yeah, those are tough. Those are really tough. Uh, because when you go to a foreclosure sale, this is one you might want to get a consult consultation with. Because foreclosures, a lot of times it depends on how you're buying them. Are you buying from the sheriff's sale? Because if you go to a sheriff's sale, you're going to need a proof of funds and you're going to have to come up with funds, depending on that county or whatever, fairly quick. Um, but if you're just buying a, a, a foreclosed house, it, it kind of stumps me right now why it's there. But the, the, that process might be a little daunting on you because it depends on the condition of the home. Not that it's foreclosed on, but I used to buy a lot of houses and flip them back in the early two, late 90s and early 2000s. And a lot of times when you go into those homes, they are gutted. Uh, so you won't be able to get an FHA loan. We do have fix and flip loans uh, that you can do. And there's other like two or three K loans and things like that. But that that's a tough market to get into because you don't know unless you're really savvy on that market. You know, you watch those TV shows, how they're making bazillions of dollars flipping homes. They probably make more money from the TV company than they do flipping homes. But <laughs> well, yeah, that's why, why they're on, that's why they're on TV. <laughs> a lot of, when, when you when you 
uh, submit this, um, you know, make sure you'll, you'll get, if you if you submit a question or a consultation in the next week, uh, you will have a, a, a person on there that will know what the answers to those questions. Cause we have a couple guys that are newbies, but they're not on, um, consultations yet. Um, you know, it's fun. So, uh, my, my dad is a real estate agent and he almost exclusively works with, uh, Fannie Mae foreclosures. Um, and so I grew up at like when I was, uh, I think around 13 or 14, uh, I learned how to pick locks so we could get into these foreclosures legally. Okay. Keep in mind, this is all like legal, but, uh, like the foreclosures are at least around here were really, really rough. Um, cause like I would go in them and it would just be, uh, you have like fleas all over the place. You have lots of like just random feces from like, you don't really want to know where it's from. Uh, just it's, it can be rough. Uh, I never went into a nice one. Um, a lot of them are pretty bad. Yeah. Or like everything, you know, they, they don't even have keys to it. Uh, so, um, yeah, how to learn how to like pick the locks to get into those. So that was fun. Um, anyway, I don't know how to yeah. do that anymore. I need to relearn that. Yeah. That, that's uh, a one of those questions I could sit here for an hour and talk, talk you through some different scenarios, but yeah, please schedule a consultation. And again, all we're doing is answering your questions. It's not a hard sale or anything. We're just, we do this right on the phone with you guys. And uh, if you need to break into houses, I also can be hired. Um, that is one of, one of the things that I do all a cart. Um, Todd said, how far ahead of a purchase should I get a pre-approval? How long does a pre-approval last? Um, you know, there's always this funny thing when, uh, anytime I hear like, especially like a friend, like, Hey, I'm going to, I think I'm looking at buying a house in like maybe six months. I'm like, cool. And then two weeks later, they're like, guess what? I'm under contract for a house. <laughs> like, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I would say whatever your timeline is, uh, just plan for it to be quite a bit shorter. Um, of course, like stick to your timeline if that's your gut, but usually what ends up happening is if you're on a live stream like this you're probably itching to buy a house pretty soon. At least that's what most where most people are at. Um, and I think it's better for you to spend lo a longer time on the market looking at homes so you can see what do you like, what do you not like, and be able to like actually make an offer on a home that comes available um, rather than kind of sitting on the sidelines and waiting. Because um, I, I can tell an example of like, uh, I have a friend who is wanting to buy a house, has not got pre-improved, um, and just looks at Zillow. And I'm like, how's the home searching going? He's like, well, yeah, I'm just been looking at Zillow and I keep finding stuff, but then it goes under contract. I'm like, yeah, well, how are you planning to like buy the house? Like you can't just look at Zillow and hope that it like you buy it somehow. Here's the uh, backyard. Yeah. You got to be ready to make an offer. So like you got to get pre-approved for a loan so you can make an offer. <laughs> He's like, yeah, maybe like, no, that's, that is how it works. That works. Um, so ultimately, I think what you should do is go ahead and take a look at a pre-approval now. There's zero obligation to a pre-approval. A hard inquiry affects your score zero to five points. Um, and then you have 45 days where multiple inquiries don't impact your score. So there's extremely low risk in just getting a pre-approval. And the main reason why is because it's going to set you up to plan things effectively in the future. Um, I'd rather you have a solid plan about what you want to buy based on real numbers rather than estimated numbers. And a pre-approval is going to give you real numbers about your payment, your closing costs, your down payment, the type of loan that you can get, your interest rate. Um, and I think that's going to be a lot better for you. And then you can always have your pre-approval and it expires and you wait another six months and then you're ready to buy later. That's perfectly fine. Um, so that's what I would do. Um, do you have any additional points? I want to add pre approval for three months. Uh, and then at that point, really, the only thing we would need to update is we would basically it, it's three months because that's when your credit expires. So all we would have to do at that point is just repool your credit and update any of your income documents. And it's that simple. basically. Yeah, it's not the whole thing all over again. Um, you'll you'll be perfectly fine. Uh, is there a cost in getting a pre-approval done? There is absolutely not. Um, uh, I will say caveat with like 90 percent of lenders, there's not. There are a couple lenders I know in the nation who do charge uh, like an application fee um, or they might charge a credit report fee. Uh, so those are things to just be aware of, but uh, we do not charge any of those. Um, 
Where, Rick said, where's that new construction at for 240? <laughs> Shh, don't tell the secret low prices. Uh, they'll get snagged up. E. Williams uh, asked, with a USD alone, if one person is applying, is the income of every other adult used to reach the maximum purchase amount? Yes, it is. That is one of the biggest downsides of USDA is uh, the income eligibility is based on every adult in the home. I think there might be one exception to... Can you remember if there's an exception for don't, elderly that, parents? That with oh, social I, security when, um, I kid that that came and hit me right in the head because I didn't know you know 15 years ago 20 years ago I just used my clients the borrowers or buyers stuff and then it came in that his wife worked and it messed it all up so I, I learned a valuable lesson the, the, a bad way oh um da -da 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 -da. but we can look just shoot me an email I can look that up for you um and we'll get that running. And just a side note too, that that's what happens on, uh, you know, anytime we run into situations like that on a pre-approval, um, we will run, you know, the verif the loan guidelines next to it just to make sure that we have everything um, ready to go. It's just on these live streams. I was like, give me the answer. Uh, every loan has about 1500 pages of guidelines. And there's at minimum four loans that we're talking about at any given time on these live streams. So the instant recall is not always immediate up in our heads. Yeah. Um, Pete said, buying a home this year, but changing jobs. Um, new job is subsidiary of existing company. Same job function. Will that matter? Um, as long as your income is going to be this around the same, you will be perfectly fine. Oh, uh, let's see. When can my second job be considered income, Dan? After two years. Or you can piece it together this way. If you had, let's say you worked at a, as a cashier at McDonald's and then you went to Burger King as a cashier. If you can loop those together, you're okay. So you have to be two years, normally we say on the job, but if it's very, very similar and there's no job gap, then you shouldn't have a problem doing that as well. But if it's a completely different everything, you're gonna, you would have to be there for two years. Um, Rosemary said question on the deed writer homes. How does that work? Deed writer. Are you familiar with that? No. Deed I'm writer. looking it up. Uh, do, do, do. Affordable. If selling the deed writer affordable housing. This looks like a Massachusetts specific thing. Uh, maybe not. Uh, shoot me an email and I'll, I'll look into that a little bit, but everything I'm seeing right here looks like it's a Massachusetts specific. Yeah, I've never heard um, of it. Korg said, if I have a job offer that involves relocating to another state, would my income for a loan be based on the new job salary? Um, yes, assuming I haven't started working yet and buying before moving. Um, you want to take that on the uh, job offer? Yeah, you, you should be okay. It depends on also, yeah, is a quick answer. Yeah, you should be all right. Some lenders might and some loan per specific loan types might require you to start the job and get a paycheck. So that's one of the things, if you're not pre-approved yet, we'd love to help you with that. You know, you can do this, uh, but those are the areas that we would explore uh, to, because there's a lot of backdrop in there. If it's, you know, if it's me, I took a position in another bank and it's across the country or whatever, I got a job offer, shouldn't be a problem at all. I've been doing this for 30 years, but if it's a brand new something and just things don't match up right, you might have a, might have some issues there, but yes. It's a, but there's a, there's multiple answers to it. So my apologies. We can, you know. Yeah. I'll say qu quick aside. Uh, so kind of what we do, obviously we're answering questions and we'll all continue answering questions here in just a second. Um, but we also have free home loan consults. Uh, so we're a nationwide lender, uh, lend in all 50 states. Um, and we work with over 80 different lenders. So we'd love to help you through a pre-approval and answer questions more in depth. Um, you just go to winthehouseyoulove.com and you can actually go ahead and just schedule an appointment here. So there's no, no form that someone's going to harass you after you fill it out. Um, you schedule on a time that works for you. Um, and then we would be happy to, uh, to help you there. So let's jump back into some questions. Um, oops, Maria, I'll get to that question in just a second. Troy said, um, we're looking at purchasing a home around March of 2024. 
uh, or around there, when should we apply for a home loan? Oh, we kind of answered that a little bit earlier. Um, but March of 2024, uh, probably say a little bit later in the year, if you're, how, I'm wondering like why that's such a specific date. Um, and if it is, that's a, that hard date, maybe start looking around closer to September. Um, that way, if there's any work that needs to be done, you can begin work. You have some like time to begin working on that, um, before March comes around. Does that feel fair? Yeah. <clears throat> Um, Maria said, what's next after getting my pre-approval letter? Danny, anyone take that? That's a fantastic question. So if hopefully you got your pre-approval letter from us, what we should have been asking you is, do you need help with, because we have a lot of other, I guess, perks for our, our, our borrowers. Uh, we do have a realtor vetting system where if you need a realtor, we can get the specific area that you're in. If we don't have a connection in that area, we have a, a realtor broker that's gonna vet realtors in that area specifically for you, and then gonna match that person up with you. And sometimes, 99% of the time, it's a perfect fit, but sometimes it isn't. So if you just don't click, you know, let us know and we'll help you find or vet another one. Um, but th that's basically it. You're, you're looking for, now, you're, now it's time to start looking for the house instead of kicking the tires. Now it's time to go out and do that. And then while you're doing that as well, there's other things that we offer you. When you get the house under contract, you're going to need a help with, or you're going to need homeowner's insurance. That's another thing we can help you with, that guide you through that as well. So there's a lot of other services that we have partners with that can help you basically from, you know, we do your pre-approval. We can set you up with a realtor. We can set you up with, you know, that realtor is most likely going to set you up with your inspector, an attorney, if you're looking for an attorney, and then all the other pieces fall into, on, into play. But you're, you, you'd need a basically a team put together. And hopefully if you got, like I said, if you got the pre-approval from us, we'd like to help you put that team together. But um, you're basically, so go out and start finding a house. <clears throat> all right, Dan, we need to speed run some of these. Okay. Uh, Solrex said, I was wondering if a lender factors in additional income recipient to whomever is originally applying for the mortgage loan. I'm not certain what you're asking. Um, if you're asking if there's additional income that can be considered, can you clarify? And then I will come back to your question, but I'm not hundred percent certain uh, what that means. Um, Missy boy said, can you pull out from the contract after inspection? Absolutely. Sweet. That was so yeah. concise. I, I, it happens a lot, believe it or not. Uh, as, yeah, as long as you have an inspection contingency in your contract, you're good to go. Uh, Juan said, if I purchase a home this year, assuming rates will be down three to five years from now, uh, speculation, and I want to refinance for a lower rate, no cash out, how does that change in home value effect process? Um, refinancing doesn't change your home value. Uh, like specifically, you're going to get an appraisal done likely when you get a, a home refinance. Um, and that's going to help determine how much money you can, uh, pull out of the house if you're getting cash out. But as far as a rate and term refinance, you likely already have enough equity to be able to do the rate and term refinance and a change in home value rarely is going to impact you maybe a touch on your interest rate. Um, but can you think of anything else of why the home value would affect the refinance? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it will to this extent. Let's say in, in, you're in Austin and you bought three years ago and now you want to refinance because your house almost doubled in value. You, it, you're you're going to get maybe a little bit of a, a break on the rate at the, the given rate at that time that you're applying for now. You're, you're looking to refinance now because your rate is lower than you when you bought the house five years ago. So what we do is we get the house appraised as, as is value today to determine what your new loan to value is. So based on that, if it's really low and your credit score and other things, it could get you a better interest rate. Um, but yeah, a lot of people, I, I don't think a lot of people understand how to refinance a property once you buy it. So that might be, I'll, I'll come up with a video. I, I, if you guys yeah. go to my well, my channel is therateupdate.com. I just posted a video about two, three weeks ago on how refinancing can save, how, how it works and how it saves you money if it, that, you know, when you should refinance. Yeah, and, and just to follow up on the question they were saying, like what change in price makes it worth it? So the change in price doesn't really affect you refinancing okay. with a no cash out um, because what refinancing really does is like, let's say you have a $300,000 loan at 
7% interest rate, and then interest rates now are at, let's say 5%, you refinance the $300,000 loan. You don't do anything with the equity of the home. Now you do need a certain amount of equity in the home to be able to refinance. Um, but for most rate and term refinances, that's around 5% equity. So you're likely going to be fine as that, as far as that goes. But I know sometimes I think people, I see every once in a while where people say the home value increases. So my loan should decrease and that doesn't happen. Your loan is going to stay the same uh, with the rate and term <clears throat> refinance. It's just that you're getting a cheaper loan, just like you would with like an auto loan. When you refinance it, you don't get a lower loan. You just get a lower rate. Um, do you expect interest rates to continue to go up? How can I get a consultation with you? Dan, you want to take that? You can get your consultation right up here. Just click in winthehouseyoulove.com and right at the top right, consultation. Um, what was the other part? Interest rates. I, so here's what's going on with rates. I'll, I'll, I'll run this into my economics real fast. About three weeks ago, the Federal Reserve came out and they raised interest rates. But believe it or not, the following day, rates hit a, I want to say like a three-month low. They hit 5.99%. Today, I think they hit seven and a quarter. So what happened is the Federal Reserve, you know, inflation was starting to come down. And the Federal Reserve was getting a little bit okay with maybe taking their foot off the gas pedal. But then all of a sudden, some things started heating up, especially the jobs market. So about two weeks ago, there was a report of how many jobs were created during a one week time frame, And they were expecting about 100,000, 180,000 jobs to be created. Well, there was actually 560,000 jobs created and that spooked the market. The market's saying, whoa, the jobs market is robust. Inflation's gonna continue. The Fed's saying that they're, they're going on the same drumbeat. So now the expectations are they might raise rates at the, at the next meeting, which is coming up here in a couple of weeks by another half a percent. Uh, they were, I, my thought was they were gonna do one more uh, round of 0.25 increase to the rates, uh, but now some things are off the table. However, this week we have a new jobs report. So if you, can, if you see that number really bad, you're gonna see rates come way back down again. So Friday, check out my, my channel if you would, it's therateupdate.com. I'm gonna post you know, that number that comes out and then I'll give you a live read on what's going on with interest rates. That's basically um, what I do. On, I do a lot of economics where Kyle does a lot of teaching and education of loan products. Uh, Camp Bio Cutie said, if a seller is providing a special warranty deed, is that a red flag? You want to take that? No. It should, I mean, yeah, I'll take it. But no, it shouldn't raise any red flags that I could think of. There, It's a warranty deed. That's basically what you want. Am I missing um, something here? Um, so basically what they're doing is they're deeding the house to you. Um, and it's called a warranty deed. But if you, if you have an attorney yeah. get involved, that's a, uh, that's a better question for title than it is for us. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. But I, I mean, unless it, if it's a, just a normal transaction, you have a realtor and a mortgage and all that stuff. I, I wouldn't concern myself with it because it has to go through so many audits for your loan that somebody will catch it if something's wrong. Um, to do Alicia said, I've heard loan officers say that buying with a high interest rate and less expensive purchase price, um, is ideal because you can refinance, but what if the monthly mortgage is more than you want? Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, a lot of loan officers say a lot of things like that. Uh, don't they, <laughs> um, anything to convince you that like you should buy, uh, Ultimately, if the monthly mortgage payment is more than what you want, don't buy the house. Please don't buy the house. Don't yeah. make the mistake of uh, becoming what a lot of people will call house poor, where all of your expenses go into your house just because you were convinced that like, oh, I can refinance in the future and eventually maybe I'll, this will be, feel more comfortable. Um, we can't plan on eventually in our finances. You really have to plan on what's happening now. So um, please only get a mortgage payment that fits in your budget that you can sustain and that isn't going to stretch you. Agree. Um, Tony Chappelle, good to see you, my man. Uh, yeah, you do need to close more loans to get Dan's $94 million backyard. Uh, <laughs> um, diving board in here. Can you see the waterfall? <laughs> it's a sweet, and you got waterfall. the fireplace going on in the background and, 
the ultra was... modern house that has like probably no furniture in it. Uh, <clears throat> um, let's see. Rashil said, uh, sent this over to Dan, sent over an application on Monday and haven't heard back yet. Um, let's see. Oh, we'll look into that. Um, you got the, let me grow this. We can, yeah, we'll look it up first thing in the morning and I can even call her. I don't know how um, Herman Wong said, how long is a typical mortgage? How long, how long does it take a typical mortgage to be approved? Is 60 days enough for closing? Um, average is going to be around 30 days. 60 days is going to be plenty uh, for closing. Um, is it a must to hire a home inspector for a newly constructed home? Uh, not a must, but I, I still would highly recommend it. Um, just because it's newly constructed doesn't mean it was constructed well. <laughs> um, often, uh, especially in this kind of higher pressure market, it's really easy for there to be some pretty glaring errors in new construction homes. And you want to spot that that's for your protection, um, before you get into the home. Uh, doo -doo. uh, Alicia said, I want to buy and have worked on credit, but it, uh, and saved, but it feels like it's getting harder each day. I don't want to keep getting rental increases. Um, yeah, I, you're not alone in that. Uh, Juan said, any experience opinion on meet Kevin real estate courses? Do you have any experience with that? No, sir. Do you know who meet Kevin is? Yeah. Okay. The bald um, dude, right? Has a YouTube channel talks about everything. Meet Kevin. Is he bald now? He's a, he didn't, he, I first started watching him when he was talking about the, the stimulus checks. Is that, is that him? No. Uh, he's this guy. Uh, hold on. Um, as soon as you show me, this I'll, guy. I'll know. Yeah, he made, he, I, he blew up with the stimulus check, how to track oh, your really? stimulus. Oh. Yeah. I don't know if I would follow him for mortgages. Is it, was that what it was? No, was I know he has some like real estate investing courses, but we don't really know anything about it. Um, Be careful. With uh, a lot of the guys make more money selling you the books and the training than they, than you'll make in real estate. Yeah. Uh, okay. Fahim said, Hey guys, I'm a regular. Just come for the knowledge. Not too many questions. All informative. Um, Thank you, sir. Uh, ZL said, I'm closing on a home. My lender initially quoted me a seven and a half percent interest rate, but it changed to 6.5 after it shopped around. I feel like my lender was trying to rip me off. How does lowering it 1% impact uh, the lender? 1%. Um, it's possible there was also a change in the market uh, during that time. Um, doesn't necessarily mean that they were trying to rip you off. Uh, so there's could be tons of different factors kind of going on in there. Um, I'd have to kind of know more details to be able to figure that out. Um, you can also ask them. You're you're you can always like ask your lender like, hey, what's up with this change? <laughs> um, that's not off limits. Uh, Anisha said, evaluate roofs thoroughly. I bought a house advertised as with a new roof. Only to find new shingles, lawyer dropping the ball in suit since its replacement is only about 20,000. Suggestions, please. Um, new lawyer? Wow. That's a toughie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah get an attorney on that one. I'm not even touching that one. I, I apologize. Thank you for coming on and put, posting that here. But yeah, that, now you're getting into legal issues, and I don't even want to, especially on YouTube. That's a, that's a toughie. Yeah. And there's, well, there's really, there's really not a lot that can be done here other than through an attorney. Um, you're, when you get into that, you know, working with a dispute, there's not, there's really not much you can do without, um, having some representation on your side to walk you through that. And if your representation isn't good, then you just need different representation. Um, really at that point, uh, Solrax would a lender factor in an additional income when applying for a first time home owner loan. Um, I think you asked this question before, and I don't know what you mean by additional income. So basically we have to look at like income to see, is it stable? Is it going to be continuous? So, um, I'd need to know like what the additional income is that you're talking about to see if it can be, uh, included. Um, can you negotiate lender credits when under contracts? Um, Sure. Lender credits aren't really negotiated. Uh, the way lender credits work is uh, the lender can increase your interest rate 
to offer you credits. So they're not really like, hey, can you give me this money? Um, your rate just increases by that amount. So you can ask your lender, can you give me a chart of the interest rates and their costs and credits, and then pick and choose uh, which one you want. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's see, let's see. Daring Ride said, with rates on the rise, how do you feel about a 10-1 arm and trying to refinance within the first 10 to 15 years? You want to take I just, absolutely. I, arms don't scare me in today's world, especially a 10-year arm. I can almost assure you, you're not going to have that rate 10 years from now. So if the rate is much better than a 30-year fixed rate now, take it. Because you won't either, one, you won't be in the house 10 years from now, and I could be wrong, but history shows you're probably not going to be in that house for 10 years, and or you're going to get a, a break in the economy where the economy is going to kind of take a, take a tank for a little bit and give you some pre on uh, interest rates. Just so you guys know, you start hearing more and more about a recession. Uh, the last five recessions that we've had, mortgage rates on average dropped 1.8% and every one of those recessions. So that's why I still feel that, you know, this year probably going to be the year that the, we get hit with a recession. I think it's going to be serious and, um, but we'll, we'll come out of it. There's a lot of technicals behind it, but, um, then next year you got to remember it's an election year. So usually all the politicians and everything else starts, they try to make things look as rosy as they can. So, uh, within the next year, year and a half, you, you should see a lot of stabilization on things. Um, I'm not, I'm not ready for the whole election cycle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already exhausted. Um, Miss crazy said, hello guys. Seems like every time I tune tune in, I'm a step closer to being a homeowner. Um, we're getting ready to submit an offer, uh, when offering, uh, when offering asking price, is it almost a guarantee it's accepted? No, unfortunately, um, it, it was like that uh, three years ago. Um, and then things have been kind of really rough in the market where it really just depends on where you're at, um, what's happening in your local market. It's possible that offering asking price um, is going to get your offer accepted, but it's also possible that there's other people who have maybe offers that have uh, you know, maybe less credits or maybe a better term, maybe it's cash, um, or maybe they're offering over asking price. And uh, so you can talk with your realtor about that um, and maybe they can get some information from the listing agent about how many offers are in, how competitive um, is this going to be? And is there a way that you can tune your offer a little bit if this really is a house um, that you like? Okay, okay, let's see. Uh, e. Williams, you said, for clarification with USDA loans, is the income of every adult used to determine the maximum loan amount? Um, no, the people on the loan is you are used to determine the maximum loan amount based on the debt to income ratio. However, USDA has an income limit, um, and that's going to be based on every adult in the home. It's very annoying and confusing why USDA decided to do that. I don't, I don't know. Uh, Rose said, I'm under contracts. Um, I'm using a huge portion of my funds as a deposit. Do you recommend doing the upgrades now or should I live in it and wait? Live in it and wait. Mm. The tastes are going to change. You might walk into the house now and say, well, now I'm not an interior decorator. My my wife actually lays out all my clothes so they match. I'm just teasing. But <laughs> you're going to get... No. I... She, she does. <laughs> so or she, I'm not... I'll say she likes West Virginia a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> See all those... <laughs> Give me another sweater. So this was a Christmas present. Um, but here's, here's, I've, I've, I've had, this is my fourth, I've had three houses in, in another house. And what we try to do is I, or at least I try to talk her into, let's live in at least a six months or a year. Because once you get into it, you start to, you know, everything starts to settle. And then you start realizing, whoa, it'd be nice to have that over there, move that wall here, or put a window in there or something like that. I would just, I would just, Take, take your time and do it, you know, steady and slow and think about it. That's my opinion. Yep. Uh, Christine said, good evening, guys. Any updates regarding the FHA MIP reduction for our, if our closing date is on 320? Uh, your lender should be able to honor that um, new MIP reduction. Uh, at least a lot of lenders are, are honoring that now. So you should be good. Um, and I, I know, Dan, you made a video on this. I didn't, I haven't made one on it yet. But uh, FHA lowered their monthly mortgage insurance 
um, from 0.85% of the loan balance uh, that's annually, then divided by 12 for a monthly payment, um, to 0.55 for the standard uh, FHA loan. That changes depending on your down payment and a few other things. Um, and some people were like, it doesn't matter. It's not saving you any money. Uh, over the life of that loan, that's on average is going to save you around $23,000. Um, and so it really is uh, offering savings to people for like no work on their part. Um, it really is a good thing when loan programs reduce the cost to get into loan programs. Um, I don't know why people, there are a lot of people who I think just want to like find frustration with everything that happens. Um, and I get it. There's that moment where you can start feeling like everything's a little futile and you're like, everything's dumb, but, uh, lowering costs for people is a good thing. Um, I don't know why people get upset about that sometimes, but, uh, so you must have read yeah. some of the comments in my video. Yeah, I did. <laughs> they make it sound like I I made the rules and I'm not I'm doing this. I'm doing, I'm like guys, I, I don't know, but it, you know, I did see a couple could, people were like you couldn't do better. You couldn't like lower it more. I'm like you, you know do Dan it. doesn't make those rules. Yeah. Uh <laughs> Uh yeah, the people making those rules do not know that we exist. Yeah. Um oh, no. Alicia, what are the lowest interest rates you're seeing? based off your current clients. We can't say that on a video like that. That comes with some like legal disclaimers. Like we'd have to put a whole little thing in here. Um, really the best way to take a look at what are, what are rates that we could help you with um, would to be to book a consult here. Um, and I'm not trying to like beat around it, but there there's just so many regulations that come with like saying a rate that we can offer uh, that we just can't do that on the fly. Um, and it's also a lot of companies that will do that and go around the law, uh, like that they're just misleading people and it's really not fair to do. Um, so take a consult here, um, and we can help you with that. Um, George says, don't buy people. The housing market is crashing. Uh, Tai Yang said, my wife is currently working part-time and went back to school full-time since last year. Let me read that again. Uh, my wife is currently working part-time and went back to school full-time since last year was working full-time before. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can we still use her part-time income for a house, uh, teaches part-time. So not exactly steady yearly income. It's based on available classes to teach. So you went full-time to part-time. Uh, I'm that thinking it's going to be extremely difficult to use that income. Then it sounds like she might be a substitute teacher, maybe, like when needed. Yeah, that's a toughie. Because like my, my daughter right now, she's a, she went to be a come a she went back through to be a teacher's aide so she can go back to get her master's. So if she would apply for a loan, we we sh we'd be able to use her income uh, because it all sits in place. But there's there's gonna be areas where it doesn't fit. Uh, and we just don't want to give you the, the guidance right now because we don't have enough of the story to do that. Um, so that's another one. Hate to say it, but, you know, go ahead and schedule a consultation. The, the whole gist of this, guys, isn't to make you schedule consultations on every question. It's the ones that are too in-depth that we could take us 20 minutes or 30 minutes to answer. Then we have a ton of people on the sidelines, you know, hoping that we get to their questions. So, you know, if it's a more and thorough answer, we'd, we'd love to do it with you one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Anita said, Hey guys, I love your show. Thank you. Hey, thank um, Miss Boy said, can you lock a rate if you haven't found a property? If yes, um, what lenders give this opportunity? Uh, yeah, this is called a, a lock in shop. Um, so we have lenders that offer this as well. If you'd like to explore that, um, can go up to 180 day lock. Uh, is that, is that our max? Yep. Um, don't know that you necessarily need a 180 day lock, but it is available to you. Uh, I will say with the lock and shop programs, they are slightly more expensive in their rate. Um, so it's something to be mindful of. However, of course, if you lock in a rate and it's slightly more expensive, but then the market goes up, you ended up winning in that. So uh, it really just depends on kind of the risk level you want to take there. Uh, Stan said, what's the approximate mortgage rate discount for first time home buyers? Obviously it will vary state by state and credit score, but what's the neighborhood? What's, oh, the neighborhood, 1%, 0.1%, 1%. Um, so it's, I wish I could give you like an average answer on this, but it's not really available. Um, so there is a loan level price adjustment waiver 
for first time home buyers. I have a video on it um, that you should watch and I'll co I cover the full thing. And it, there's so many different factors that will actually change if you can qualify for that. Um, it, on average, I, if you're looking at a ballpark, probably around a quarter to a half percent around there. It's not going to like shatter the world. It's not like 3% lower. Um, somewhere around there is what you're going to be looking at. Uh, and again, it really just depends on a lot of different factors that I cover in that video, like your debt to income ratio, um, your down payment, your credit score. And there's all these little kind of fine tuned details in there as well, based on the loan type. Um, so hopefully that helps. I know it's not probably not the most helpful answer, but I would expect around a quarter to half a percent in the interest rate. Um, there is also an income limit on there too. Just, just as a heads up, uh, Juan said, thanks guys. Much appreciated in regards to refinancing, wondering if rates were lower, but assessment came in lower than the purchase price. How would that affect my process and equity to debt? Um, yeah, so that, that is a consideration of if you're refinancing in the short term. So like, let's say you bought a home in a really high cost market and let's say you bought it for uh, $700,000 and then next year you want to refinance, but your home value, I'm going to make up an example, went down to $600,000. Um, well, let's say that like you only put $100,000 down initially, so now you don't have enough equity to refinance the home. In that instance, you would have to actually pay money to refinance, basically to lower your mortgage to be able to have enough equity to refinance. Um, that is a very rare situation that most people will not find themselves in. Um, and I know in your example, I think you were talking about refinancing in five years. You likely should have enough equity padding in there to be able to refinance. Um, but ultimately like you do have to have a minimum level of equity for a refinance. Usually it's around 5%. Um, and as long as you have that, you'll be able to do a rate and term refinance. Uh, take there, a shot for every time I said refinance. <laughs> there, there are, there are, if you go with a government sponsored loan and those are FHA, VA and USDA. USDA has a streamline, correct? I'm so. Oh yes. Does you okay? They, would they like? I'll just go through the, the the FHA one. It's called an FHA streamline. So what they do is your your property value doesn't matter because what, on a FHA streamline, here's what they do. Let's say you close at seven percent, and then now rates are five and a half percent. So you want to refinance to save some money. If you have an FHA loan, all that we do is uh, as long as your credit scores are high enough to refinance. You don't have any late payments in the last six months and maximum of one late payment in the last year, you would qualify for what's called an FHA streamline. There's no appraisal needed and there's no income verification. Basically, they're saying you're paying us now, so we will allow you to take advantage of today's low rates uh, without even doing really much research on this. So it's just a bunch of payments we have to do on your behalf. We can do those. And that happens with FHA, VA and USDA. The only program that you have to refinance or pay, do another appraisal in most cases is the conventional loans. Um, Dan, there was a question for you in here about locking. When is a good time to lock? I can't find the question there. Oh, there we go. Is it a good idea to lock rates? There we go. Right now, I. I really haven't been t advising my uh, uh, our loan officers to lock or not. If the customer or the borrower is comfortable with the rate where they are right now, we lock them because the market is like, here's an example. And this is a good example of home prices, interest rates and everything else on my way to work today. And this is a true story. I I'm 13 miles away from my office. I pass, let's say 10 um, gas stations. And I, this is no joke. And I, I was also going to video this like this week. The first one I pass is, is right past my daughter's school. And the gas was 333. I went down the street and about two miles down the street, the gas is 379. I go about two more miles down the street. The gas is 383. I go almost to my office and the gas is 409. Guys, I only went 10 miles. Do you see the discrepancies there? So Everything is so volatile now. You see the stock market one day is up five, six, seven hundred. Uh, next day is down five, six, seven. That's not normal. So right now, if you like the rate that you're being offered, lock it. You know, as a broker, if you're dealing with us, if you lock in and rates come down, 
we can kind of disregard that lock and lock you at another lender. That's the benefit of working with us because we have relationships with over 80 different lenders. We can use their rates and their programs, and we can just pick and choose which bank or lender we want to, we want to take your loan to. And there's no, you, you don't see any difference. You're, you're, if you want you know, XYZ Bank's rates, we can give you their rates and their programs. So I just, I just came out with a training video for all of our mortgage advisors in, in-house that I'm, I'm going to start having them go through. If you schedule a consultation and you want to look at rates, they're going to actually show you what we do behind the scene. And they're going to show you all the mortgage companies that we're set up with. And we offer their rates on a wholesale level. So we're going to be doing all your shopping for you. Awesome. Well, we've been, we, I think we hit an hour just a little bit ago. Um, so thank you everyone for being here. If you yeah. want have more questions, cause I know we couldn't answer everybody's, you can just book a, a free home loan consult right here. When the house you love.com. Um, so what you'll do is just click this button and then you can schedule a call with a mortgage advisor on our team. Um, so we'll do exactly you know what we're doing on this live stream. You'll be able to talk with one of our mortgage advisors, ask questions, go through some different scenarios and take a more in-depth look at like what you could qualify for, what rates could be and getting a pre-approval um, because we don't have enough time to answer every single question on here. Um, we would be here for probably, uh, probably to like three in the morning. Um, so thank you all for being here. We would love to help. This is the best way um, that you can reach out to us. I'm also going to put uh, my email um, here in the, uh, the chat along with Dan's at the rate update.com. Um, and then check out Dan's channel as well. Uh, it's The Rate Update with Dan Frio. It's linked right here in the title. Uh, it's probably, let me do this. Am I doing this backwards? I think it's over there <laughs> somewhere in the title. Um, but we, we do these every, I'm sorry? And we work together because sometimes people are like, hey, who's, the, who's your special guest today? We're actually coworkers. Yeah. Yeah. Dan and I probably have like six phone calls a day. <laughs> Um, so oh we do these every single Wednesday at 8 PM Eastern. So same time, same place. Um, and we'd love to see you on the next one. Uh, again, if we couldn't answer your question, email, schedule a call. Um, and we'd love to help. We can actually give you more in-depth answers through those, uh, you know, those places than we can here on the live stream. Um, but thank you for being here. We will talk thank with you next week. Thank you so much.